This Proto Man review is brought to you by Big Bad Toy Store. Big Bad Toy Store, the ultimate in toys. Now I gave you Bebop in the last review, and now I'm going to give you Rocksteady of the Ninja Turtles Classic Collection release. This is Wave 2, and now we're doing Rocksteady. So let's do this. Proto Retro. So here is the Mad Rhino himself, Rocksteady in all his glory of packaging. Um, like I mentioned before with the Bebop review, um, very weird choice of packaging art in the back, a very interesting style, but I'll get to that when we open the figure itself. So until then, let's do So this. out of his packaging, Rocksteady sports a aesthetic that has been kind of controversial among uh, Ninja Turtle collectors and fans. Um, the designers behind Playmates uh, really went for a weird amalgam of things, at least that is my belief, as I stated with the, my Bebop review previously. Uh, judging by the, the choices of what was picked for the final product here really tells me where stuff was pulled from. And not to mention, again, going to the box art that was used um, really speaks even more of that. I'll start with, first of all, um, the overall body type. Now, a muscular rock steady over a more aloof and pot-bellied kind of rock steady. And what I mean by that is we all know the original cartoon Rocksteady um, sported a bit of a belly and was kind of shorter and kind of hunched over. But this is where the original figure comes in with that argument. The original figure was muscular, lean, and didn't have the pot belly. Um, but in this case, they gave him a midriff for the shirt, which where the belly would have been spewing out, so to speak, where this one had the tank top that went all the way down to the bottom. Both had the headwear, Although an interesting twist that I was not aware of until this figure started hitting shelves, his helmet and goggles is removable, which is a really nice touch uh, to be able to have both aesthetics. But here's the thing too, the original um, five episodes, which consists of season one of the, of the Ninja Turtles series by Fred Wolf in 1988, uh, sported a different aesthetic than the rest of the series, which was a lot more darker, the, the characters were not as comical looking, and those were the episodes that had Rocksteady sporting the goggles and the helmet more consistently, although it went on and off throughout the episodes. Um, it was also where we would see the debut and probably the last appearance of some of his weapons. In the case in point, um, his sword here which officially, um, in the original toy line, was called the Turtle Carving Knife. And uh, let's just bring in original Rocksteady, and there's his original carving knife and that. So it's nice that they made that attempt to have the original weapon. And then, of course, his classic gun, uh, which was called the Retro Mutagen Gun, based off of what they called ooze in the show, Retro Mutagen Ooze. And it's nice that they tried to make an effort at least to copy that more accurately. And the funny thing is, is that this gun was the gun that was actually held also by Bebop in the TV series. If you wanted to make something that was a little more uh, show accurate, um, this was actually a gun that was kind of held more by both members as Bebop didn't really have um, that screw gun, the, you know, turtle drill gun as we call it. Uh, in the show, and it wasn't even in the video games, he actually carried something that was very similar to what Rocksteady had. So it's kind of cool that he got at least two out of his three accessories that the original toy had. The third being was the um, <laughs> the manhole cover shield, but again, we can only hope for so much in this case. So that was the third accessory, but that one was lacking. Now, what's cool is the little things here and there that were brought over. The bandolier, the... Uh, the uh, the grenade, that stuff that was present in the original cartoon design. Uh, the tan uh, undershirt is what was present more in the cartoon design, the black one exclusive to the toy. And again, interestingly enough, um, the green jacket that is shown there on the, on the box art is actually what was worn by Rocksteady when he was a human. And this is where we'll pull in another figure that kind of has that. And that was the mutating uh, Rocksteady from the original toy line that had that green jacket because of his need to transform and be that original Rocksteady. Assuming that was his original name, 
back then we never really learned that um but yeah so it's it's interesting that the box art sports that green jacket that was present in the original rocksteady's human design and of course found exclusively on the mutating ninja turtle toy from the mutation line so very weird choices in the box are very weird choices used with the toy but nonetheless still looks great i feel that in the end the designers were going for a mix of pulling heavily from the original toy which is what they're you know what they're going for and i feel that when they're doing this line they're really looking at the original toys and getting ideas from that and then picking and choosing this and that from the fred wolf cartoon that's probably the reason why this became removable was to appease more to the fans of the fred wolf cartoon because Rocksteady really didn't wear that helmet that often in the series. So it's really nice that they did that, not to mention the bandolier and the grenade, the tan. Those are things that were found in the original Rocksteady character in the cartoon. Same thing with the color of the pants. Um, just those kind of little things. Still looks great, amazing looking figure, and holds all his accessories very well. If I had to say one complaint about the accessories is that this bandolier that was found in the cartoon, it would be stored and is back there. There's no real way really to do that unless you like made some kind of like makeshift elastic band for it to just held it, hold it back there. But in the end, um, it's still kind of cool that he comes with it. You know, just making the extra effort. It's which is a shame because uh, Bebop didn't come with his knife. He just came with the one single accessory. And like I said before in the video, considering that it was an accessory that was never even used in the show, where at least in the case of Rocksteady here, that gun was used everywhere, and that weapon at least showed up a few times, sported on his back uh, in the TV series of the first season. So this is clearly the winner of this wave of the two of them. And that's pretty awesome. Um, Rocksteady def definitely is a, a must-have pickup, despite the fact that he's not completely show accurate, uh, not sporting the gut and everything. But with the removable helmet, the two weapons that are a lot more iconic to the character than even Bebop, he's clearly the winner of the two. And if you had to pick one up, I would definitely pick up Rocksteady of the bunch. And this is important that people do pick up these figures, because the success of this line, and specifically this way, will lead to more of it. And that's the main reason why uh, Playmates kind of dialed it back on some of the QC and the paint put into these figures and why there is paint lacking from what is shown here on the packaging here, whether it be on the helmet or on the gun. And that's also where I'll get into um, with the comparison of size here and talking about also the base, like I said, with the Bebop review. Um, they painted the base a lot less as opposed to the original Wave 1 stuff. Again, to dial back on those costs, keep the line a little cheaper, but at least be able to give it some life. Now, size-wise, um, as you could see, Rocksteady is shorter than the Turtles, but like I said in the Bebop review pr prior, um, this line was made with no intent really of there being more, so they really went all out in terms of the plastic use, the paint and everything. So this time around, they're taking it more liberal, making a little bit smaller, but at least uh, giving the line a chance to continue onward. And I mean, again, if we compare to the originals, and let's bring in Raphael here, um, you know, you could see how much taller um, Rocksteady was compared to Raphael, but this was a line where these two were created at the exact same time with that intent. So ultimately in the end, I say pick it up. Really, really, really good figure. Uh, definitely the better of the two. And um, if you can pick up both, please do, because the success of this line continuing and getting more is very dependent on what happens from, you know, in terms of sales of the previous line. So that's more or less all I could say. This is Proto Matter Proto Retro, and this has been a video review of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classics Collection, Rocksteady. So until then, guys, take care and cowabunga. <laughs>